Welcome to Engine Adventures. Today, we've got the Cadillac XT6 with the 400 badge on the back. Before jumping into the review, I wanted to talk about our giveaway, which is starting with the release of this video and will end September 12th. All right, so the second item and the last item we're doing too in our giveaway is the Handle All by High Lift. So the first item is that first aid kit from My Medic, and then here we have the Handle All. So the Handle All is just a multi-tool basically, and it's got a shovel, an axe, a pick, and a sledge in it, and then a collapsible handle and the carry bag. instructions there so there's your shovel and it's actually like a full-size shovel so if you've been using those army entrenching tools or whatever uh, this one's a, a full-size shovel there's the bag that it fits in so you can see that's uh, about two feet long probably 20 inches long and then everything will fit in this bag um, I'm not gonna take it all out because I don't want to have all the struggles of getting everything back it goes. And then here, we've got the pick. And the axe. So you can see that's a full-size axe. It's not really very sharp. It does need to be sharpened. And then the sledge. And the final item here, is the handle. So the handle and actually these pins. So there's a handle and pins. The uh, handle here has these holes in it. So on this end, you would put that in there and this pin, you have to undo that ring and then you slide that in and put that key ring back onto it. Like so. And then just drop that key ring back on. And there you go. So then it's a secure system. Your handle's not gonna come apart. And then you put your tool in the other end. And just put your pin through there. So you can do that with any of them. This handles, uh, I'm not sure how long that is, a little under three feet maybe, two and a half feet long. But then you get a full on handle for whatever you're doing. Instead of just a short handle from an entrenching tool or a compact tool, you get a pretty decent sized ha handle there. It all fits in that little bag. It's convenient, nice tight little package there. Um, High Lift makes a ton of great products. And the dog just went running by me and there's no people here. Interesting. Anyway, High Lift makes a ton of great products. If you would like to win this, I'll put the link in the video down below and you can just follow that link and enter there. I just need your email and your name, I think. And then uh, we'll contact the winner. It'll probably be the week after Labor Day. This platforms based off of the GMC Acadia and Chevy Traverse. It's a three row crossover. And this thing looks pretty gorgeous, very nice inside and out. But I can't help thinking about what it could have been. This one has the GM V6 engine. I believe it's 3.8 liter. Puts out 300 and something horsepower, 300 and something torque, I believe, as well. And the reason I'm saying makes me think of what could have been is because this one, Cadillac was working on an all new platform for it, and they were going to throw that Blackwing twin turbo V8 in it that comes in the CT6V. And GM decided, nah, let's just keep it generic, make it the same as all of our other vehicles. And I think part of that was 
or is that they are moving to all electric vehicles. They're making the push to spend time and money on developing electric vehicles instead of gas powered vehicles. So they had the, the plans to move to a rear, rear wheel drive with the Blackwing V8 for this vehicle, but instead kept the Chevy Traverse and Buick. Uh, not, uh, I think one of the Buicks is this too, and the GMC Acadia. This one does have heated and cooled seats. Up front, I haven't even spent that much time in the back, we'll have to climb back and take a look around, but it does have the heads up display right there. You can change the info of what it shows on there. Normally, I get into some of these luxury cars and there are just too many options. And I don't feel that way with this one. And then when I say options, I mean too many buttons. This thing is relatively simple to use. There's not a huge learning curve for it, which I really like. It has the touch screen up here, auto stop start. And then your lane keep assist and plenty of other things. I mean, like all systems, I'm not sure where this school zone is that that thing's talking about. But anyway, let me see if I've got a window sticker in here. Okay, let's go over this real quick. So, like I said, you can get a Lincoln Aviator for roughly the same cost. This one's 71585 and only has a few, okay, has quite a few options, I should say. So the base price is cut off there at the top, but you can see it's the 3.6, I can never remember, 3.6 or 3.8 liter. I had an old Thunderbird with a 3.8 liter V6, so I think that's where I'm getting this. Anyway, and nine speed automatic, exterior satin steel metallic with the jet black interior. So the standard price, 54,000. 695. This one has the platinum package, which is the really nice leather seating and the microfiber suede headliner. And then a bunch of other real time damping suspension, the floor mats. And then it has the enhanced visibility and technology packages, which include that mirror. So that's the camera one. You can see how it doesn't change as you move. And there's a normal mirror. So an HD surround vision with the cameras, and I'm sure there's a way to pull it up, but I don't know it off the top of my head. Oh, wrong button, there we go. But there's cameras and you can adjust all sorts of settings down there with it. So I guess we can go through some of those. So pretty good camera system. Actually, it's really good. It's clear, super clear. It's good high quality system. The 20 inch wheels were two grand. Night vision was two grand. Driver assist package with the auto seat belt tightening, which was interesting if you're cornering hard, it tightens your seat belt to help hold you in place as well, which was kind of cool. At least uh, when I was in sport mode, I don't know if it does it in all the modes. And then the navigation with the 14 speaker Bose system, premium headlamps are $800. And then comfort and air quality package, which this has an air ionizer in it. And then the rear seats on the outboard are heated as well. So the total price, total of options is 15,895 with the destination charge brings it up to $71,585. And that's where my issue is with this. Yes, there are a ton of really good features in this car and this crossover, but the problem is that the Lincoln Aviator can be had for roughly the same price. I mean, option packages and stuff like that, but it just seems to be, it's certain, the Aviator is certainly a better driving car. And as that's because the rear wheel drive bias i am especially when it comes to heavy vehicles like this front wheel drive just doesn't do it for me um when you're under heavy acceleration there's a lot of torque steer it's a lot of weight to move around and if you're accelerating sorry about that kind of hard then 
it's doing a lot of torque steering for you. It doesn't have as much traction as your weight transfers to the rear. It's just not as enjoyable for me. So it does have various drive modes is what I was gonna show you, but I wanna show you that little cup first. So when I push that mode button, you have all-wheel drive, sport, off-road, and tour mode. Tour mode's a two-wheel drive. Um, and it has pretty good fuel economy. So that's my average 22.4, but when they dropped it off to me, it was like 24 or 25 miles per gallon. Touch screen up there, I don't know. It's just a normal normal system. It looks really nice, has the panoramic sunroof. Go ahead and open that up. Of course, it goes all the way back so you're Second row passengers have a good amount of room as well. Let's jump back there, take a look at it. And this is to adjust the height of the rear hatch. Pop the hood so we can take a look at the engine when we're done here. All right, so this is pretty roomy. I think mean, it is a three row and you can slide up the seats forward. There we go, fan speed. Okay, anyway, so it is nice leather. I love the leather in this thing. All the stitching is really cool. It's reminiscent of the Cadillac symbol right there. Just grab the handle there and it tilt and slide. And then it doesn't quite get far enough forward me to fit my boot through there but oh it has to come all the way back not quite so I can fit here I'm five foot ten so I can fit in all three rows behind sitting behind myself if you're taller than me I actually have an okay amount of headroom here but if you're taller than me it's gonna get a little tight and not bad back here there's actually power USB-C ports and really not too bad. And the back seat passenger can get out because they can just slip that. They don't have to have someone else do that for them. Of course, most vehicles, all vehicles are that way now and make it real easy to do that. And then right here, you have buttons on both sides. So that's on the passenger and the driver's side that will fold the rear seats, but let's fold this down first. So you can fold that by pulling this handle and then you can drop this other seat. And apparently it's gonna slide forward a little bit. So there you go. And you can see it's not quite flat. So if you're hoping to sleep back here, it's not gonna be perfect. So you'll be a little uncomfortable. I'm sure you can make it work. Option, so you can fold those front seats. So these two buttons fold the middle row, these two fold the rear row. So you can do that. That's not too bad. It's, I mean, that little gap there, you could probably sleep in here okay, especially with enough padding. It'd be just fine to sleep in here. toolkit this one is i believe the uh windows or the shade or whatever so you can put it up there and cover your equipment whatever you've got in the back spare tire with all your gear jack and stuff like that to change it that's just the locking lug nuts that uh are part of a package on this and then of course you can use this lever here to recline the seats as well so they go back that's as far back as the middle row goes while they could have done better with making it rear wheel drive and running that blackwing v8 it still does great the throttle on your first tip in is a little bit aggressive but it's not the worst thing it just takes a little bit getting used to and i think they almost do that to make it feel like it's faster so this is not a super fast vehicle and not 
like not that bad of course we'll get some driving footage for you it's adequate i should say but they make that throttle tip in a little more aggressive so it feels like it's a little bit faster than it is all right so we're in tour mode which is going to be your everyday driving mode and it does pull i mean that pulls pretty good this little big v6 i guess i don't know 3.6 liter v6 does pretty well we hit 60 there no problem i don't know it's not that bad to drive but when you drive fast you get a little bit of torque steer you feel it pulling the wheels a little bit side to side especially you know you lose a little attraction on one side it'll pull you the other way it's just not quite as stable as a rear-wheel drive vehicle and as i mentioned before there's a lot of weight on this thing so pulling hard with that much weight is a little bit weird obviously accelerating in the corners uh you'll you'll pull it sideways and whatever but really doesn't do that bad at all uh, i've really enjoyed driving it despite my complaints about the opportunity that cadillac had and missed out on i was doing a rear-wheel drive platform for this with the blackwing uh it does actually drive really well it's a good highway cruiser pretty quiet inside maybe not the most quiet vehicle i've been in but pretty quiet and smooth ride it's got all the uh lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control this one is not like a hands-off system or anything you have to be driving it if you go over the line it'll bring you back but it's uh, not meant to be driven without your hands on the wheel it is a little bit noisier with that top open as well i have i mean the windows are closed but the shade has been pulled back so you can get a little bit more road noise that way that window shade on the top does cut out quite a bit of noise and let's do a little oh we're gonna miss the light i'm just gonna try and give you a little passing so we're going 47 and they're downshifted down to 60. so it takes a second for it to downshift and one interesting thing i don't know why I don't know if it was a mode I was in for some reason, but there was one time where I was getting on the freeway. No, I was already on the freeway cruising at you know, 65, something below the speed limit because I was following a car. Finally got enough space to go around it and I put my foot all the way down on the floor. I'm at like 2000 RPM and it didn't downshift. Uh, that was really a weird thing to me. I don't know why it didn't downshift and it would only did it that one time, but I, I mean, I couldn't have pushed the pedal down. I even let off a little bit and pushed it down again. And it was still accelerating. I ended up going, you know, faster than I wanted to because I was trying to figure out why it's not downshifting when I'm going full throttle. Uh, it only, like I said, only did that once. I don't know. I don't know why I did it. I tried it again later, it downshifted and took off. It just seemed like it kind of has a, its own idea and I was never able to repeat that. Thanks for watching Engine Adventures review of the 2020 Cadillac XT6. This is the 400, of course, and really beautiful vehicle inside and out. Just the, the driving performance, while it's still good, it's a, uh, front wheel drive based and doesn't compete with all of the other German competitors and the Ford Aviator, uh, Lincoln Aviator, um, that those are all rear wheel drive and they just have better driving dynamics when you're pushing it hard. When you're cruising, this thing does no problem. You don't really even notice front wheel drive. It's just when you get into the throttle a little bit. Most people probably won't even notice too much and there is quite a bit of room for all three rows, fit adults in them. You know, it's a great, great vehicle overall. Tons of features in it. I'll see if I can get a night shot driving to throw in a picture of that or a, a short video clip of that uh, night vision system. The Cadillac has an optional infrared camera. So right now, these are my regular headlights. Those are my brights. And if you come down here, let that focus you can see 
all the way to the end of the street and the house that's at the end of the street. So that thing actually works really well. The lighting difference is hard to see, but it seems to be maybe a little bit narrow, but if you're driving at higher speeds, then you can see a lot further distance than you can with just your headlights on, even if it's your brights. So that's a pretty cool feature. And here's some uncommon cars you can see. It does a good job of mitigating that so it doesn't blow out the light on the camera at all. I understand it's infrared, but they still would be emitting some of that infrared light. I don't have a pedestrian or anything to simulate, but that's really where this system would shine, is if you've got a jogger or a dog or something that comes out in front of you during the night. Cool system. So that's crazy. You can actually see the outline of the mountain, which I can barely, barely see with my own eye. For some reason, like the top ridge of that mountain is lit up in this thing. And I'll show you in just a second once it gets darker so you can see it better. But yeah, I doubt there's any way that's gonna show up on camera. That's really cool though. I can't believe it sees that far. The one downside to this system is that it's not projected onto the heads-up display. As great as the night vision system is, I think it's an option I would bypass just because you have to look down at the gauge cluster and you can't look through the windshield. That reduces its usability significantly for me and just takes it off of being a viable product. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great day.